Louisiana Beer Reviews examines and reviews Fuller's Vintage Ale 2012 edition. I was at Dorignac's supermarket in Metairie, Louisiana, Jefferson Parish, Louisiana, and I was looking for the 2013 edition. I said, well, $7.99, I'll buy it. I looked on the shelf and it had an unusually they had an unusually large or long row of the Fuller's boxes. So I reached back there, 2010, I gasped, I pulled it, reached again, 2011, gasped, pulled that, reached again, 2012. I said, these people here don't rotate, which is typically a problem, but in this case it was a benefit because I was able to get three vintages that I otherwise would not have been able to acquire. And I was reading online and people were very praiseworthy of these beers. And I've had only, I've seen only high remarks for it. Now, Beer Advocate doesn't break it down. They just say vintage ale, like it's one beer since 1997. But Ray Beer, they break it down year by year. So this is the 2012 edition and they're saying 97 out of 100 and a 99 out of 100 for the style. And these boxes are nice. Uh, it was $7.99 for each bottle, and they they got tasting notes in the back, which I won't bore you with. And then they've got a little booklet with all the tasting notes from '97 to the present. And you can look online, and they have all those there. No use getting into all of that. <clears throat> but it says there this beer is brewed with. This year's finest hop varieties, including, they didn't say only, but including Goldings, Sovereign, and Target hops. Unique yeast and organic barley. Okay, so, uh, John Keeling is the brewmaster. Now, this beer says best before the end of 2015. And they say on their website they're obligated to give a best buy date, but they advise, well, they don't, I don't know, somebody is telling me that he's talked personally to the brewer and he advises waiting at least five years. But I don't have the patience to do that. <laughs> I've already got some other stuff uh, um, aging. Now, I tried the 2010 and then I tried the 2011. I didn't find that the 2011, which is obviously newer, only three years old as opposed to four years old, I didn't find that it was appreciably different. Maybe it was slightly different. So let's see about this one. Now here, we're at 2012, so only two years old. Let's see if this one is any, is there, if there's any great difference. Beautiful bottle. I like the little shroud, the little sticker. The, uh, the bottle design, the dark brown color, protecting it from the light. Don't see a bit of smoke. Oh yeah, I do. I do see some smoke or water vapor. Um, it's raining outside. It's cold. The temperature is, uh, what does that say? 36 degrees, March 4th. Isn't that something? And it was 80 degrees on March 2nd. Okay. Uh, I prefer the 80 degrees. Um, thick, cream-colored head, soapy at the top, just like the other two, 2010 and 2011, and a, a murky, orange, copper, or amber appearance, just like the 2010 and 2011, with uh, some... Now, this is some stray bubbles. The other two had bubble streams, okay, so that, there's a difference, but the color and the everything else is the same. Let's go with the aroma. I may have to stick my nose down in it. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all, but it's got to be done. Yeah, it's the same, really. I wanted to get that foam up in my nose because uh, I think I get more of a pickup with that. And what am I getting? Same thing as the other two. 
the metallic note, a strong metallic note. And I, I don't know if that's a good thing, but I think it's coming from the hops. I'm getting that thing like I talked about in the 2011, the uh, ditch. Over, around here we have ditches and we have the culverts, the uh, galvanized uh, steel culverts, and you get the mud that gets in the ditch, and then it'll fill with water. Sometimes little frogs will get in there. And then some places in Louisiana, not here though, but uh, north of Lake Pontchartrain and even further north into Mississippi, you'll get the iron, the iron, the mud with the heavy iron. And that's why you have some people that, that eat the mud. Women, pregnant women, will actually eat the mud. Sounds, I know it sounds incredible, but it happens. <laughs> they suck on the mud. When it's raining like right now, they'll go out and get that slimy mud and suck on it. And it, what it does, the theory is that it, they, they need their iron, need, their body needs iron. And I think that's where the word dirt poor comes from. Dirt poor because they don't, maybe can't afford uh, iron supplements, so they suck the mud. But, and this, this kind of smells like that wet, Mississippi or North Louisiana mud, the ironized mud. Uh, some bread crust, and which is the barley malt. Maybe, maybe some hop resin. But you know, this is this is interesting because the other two, the older ones, I was getting the turned fruit. Like, say, you had some. I was saying. Um, kumquats like they were old turning sour you know turning bad rotten I'm not getting that here if I'm getting fruit here it's not turned it's fresher which to me is better than turned but uh, let's go with the flavor getting the bread crust. I'm getting the barley malt. I'm getting the hops, the straightforward bitter hops, not the piney, not the floral. The sugar, the sweetness, the mouthfeel of course is heavy and chewy. I guess so, 8.5 percent. The finish is the same, the semi-wet, the the full finish, the rich finish, the, the peculiar, interesting, odd barley wine style finish but it's a less of all of that it's less barley wineistic it's less rough it's less uh, of the turned fruit it's sort of like everything and less of everything I know these heavy beers are supposed to mellow over age and I I don't know that much about beer. I guess that's true, but um, this has got me a little mixed up because I thought it was going to be harsher than the older ones, but yet it's mellower. It's more pleasant. It's more accessible, you know. Um, it even has a crisper... How you phrase it a more crisp yeah I guess it's crisper mouthfeel or finish I should say um well I don't know but even the lacing is a little more straight around than splotchy I mean it is splotchy to an extent I don't know it's strange it's delicious it's good it's interesting it's profoundly interesting like the other two it's memorable. I said that in a 2011, Maria Devine didn't like 2011, said it had cardboard flavor, but her theory was that her bottle had been laid down instead of standing upright, and that could be the problem. I'm not getting a touch of cardboard, but um, I don't know. Uh, it's really um, perplexing. But yet, on the other hand, it's still fascinating. 
I did a lot of thinking about this beer this morning of uh, the Fuller's and I've tried other Fuller's beer London Pride Porter ESB wonderful just really wonderful beers um, but uh, I was <clears throat> lining up some of these the St. Ides high gravity malt liquor I bought this back in uh, Oh, about 2011, 8% alcohol, although it's interesting. They don't sell St. Ives in Louis yeah, 2011. They don't sell that in Louisiana at all anymore. But they used to sell it back in the uh, mid-90s. They would sell the St. Ives, and uh, it was just called premium malt liquor. And I think it was 6%, and then they jumped it up to uh, the high gravity, and they don't make the regular one anymore. Same picture with the hurricane you know they're trying to uh, capitalize on the <clears throat> other malt liquors hurricane strength right up uh, you say what's the point uh, I'm getting to the point <coughs> I was up in the Chicago land area and bought this and when I was in uh, Washington DC across the street from Nationals Ballpark, I bought the St. Ides High Gravity in a can, 8.2. Hold it down. So it's saying, it's saying hold it down. Uh, Old English 800, High Gravity, 8%. Bought this in Beaumont, Texas at, at uh, Mercado, Fami de, Mercado de Familia on U.S. Highway 90. Business route. 8.1% steel reserve high gravity bought this in Louisiana. They used to sell this until 2003 when they came out with the 6%. And we get the 6% now. This is the, the one you'll get in many states. Maria Devon, the girl next door, tried this. She thought it was horrible. I would like to do an examination of it with her, though. Here we have the uh, Schlitz VSL 8.5. Not sold in southeastern Louisiana, but interestingly sold in southwestern Louisiana. We've got Anheuser-Busch's Hurricane Category 5, 8.1%. It's ubiquitous, ubiquitous here. You see it in almost every store, 12 packs. And here's an oddity. You won't see this pretty much anywhere. This is Jaguar High Gravity Lager, 8.3%. Strange, 8.3%. Bought this in Racine, Wisconsin. On uh, Wisconsin Highway 32 in downtown, sort of a scary little neighborhood. Uh, at a, but I didn't feel too scared going in because uh, I was uh, on a main drag and I figured it'd be all right. And it was. Uh, I thought this was ghastly, horrible, a nightmare. I poured two of them down the drain. But to be fair, we had had Hurricane uh, Isaac, and we didn't have electricity for a week, and I had it in an ice chest, and I don't think it was dead cold enough. And when you, you're drinking a high-gravity lager, you want it dead cold, and it was not. But the point of this is that these are all high-gravity beers near or at the same ABV as the Fuller's. Now you say, well, damn, Louisiana Beer Reviews, this is a, an ale. Those are lagers. Adjunct lagers, which use corn and rice. I'm aware of that. The point is that even though this is a high quality, you could say craft beer, although it depends who you talk to, although the craft, the Brewers Alliance just recently changed their. Uh, conception of what craft beer is due to a lot of pressure from the macro breweries probably a, a, a threatened lawsuit or, or possibly that but uh, they weren't able to um, back up what they were saying that's, that's an interesting storyline but uh, <coughs> the point is that these are very uh, uh, mass produced beers especially your uh, Old English 800, which is not sold in Louisiana, not the high gravity. We get OE 800 uh, everywhere, you know, the regular 6%. Uh, 
Steel Reserve is very uh, widespread. Steel re uh, this is pretty common. This, oh, and uh, I can't leave out Colt 45 high gravity. 8.5. I've never seen it in Louisiana. It's not, not sold here. It is sold in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida along U.S. Highway 19. Bought that. Very happy to buy it. But the point is that these beers are, uh, yes, they're cheap. They're, uh, what, to use a nice term, value priced. Okay. Um, generally, the reviews are very poor for these. The reviews for this are some of the highest reviews on the planet. But what I was thinking about was that I said, you know, it's kind of interesting that here I'm drinking a beer that I paid $7.99 for. It's 16.9 it's, uh, ounces. And I paid, uh, oh, I think this was, uh, I don't think it was any higher than $2.50. It might have been, and I don't believe so, but it might have been $2.99 for this bottle, but I do not believe that at Mercado de Familia. But, uh, and I've drank a lot of high gravity malt liquors over the last 18 years, I can assure you. Maybe too many. But, so I have experience with this genre. But I was thinking, 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 and I said to myself, I said, Self, you paid $7.99 for four bottles, $7.99 each for four bottles of Fuller's Vintage Ale, a strong English Ale, 8.5%. This is the important point. But, but, comma, but, can you honestly say that the Fuller's Vintage Ale 2012 or 10 or 11 is appreciably better than those. Well, yes, it's light years better than this atrocity of mankind, Jaguar. Because Jaguar is made by what I call an outlaw brewery. Um, it's a Minhas Craft Brewery. Yeah, Craft. Uh huh. Uh, Mountain Crest, SRL, LLC, whatever. It's a uh, Joseph Huber, Menhaus Brewery in Monroe, Wisconsin. They uh, specialize in making atrocious beers, uh, although they can do good stuff. They make Dixie and Dixie Black and Voodoo, which are, are good, but they're following the recipe from the Bruno family in New Orleans. But uh, I drank this, and it's one of the few beers I've ever poured down the drain. Nightmarish. Memorable. Can't, can't say it wasn't memorable. Nightmarish. A horror. A horror, but memorable. Do need to do it ice cold, though. <coughs> let's, uh, let's pick one. I want to be fair. Let's pick the Schlitz Very Smooth Lager BSL. Debuted in 2005. Uh, not sold in southeast Louisiana, sold in southwestern Louisiana. Have bought this in Tallahassee, Florida. Tallahassee, Florida, I like because I stay there many times on the way to South Florida. Typically, at uh, I've stayed at the Super 8 on uh, US Highway 27. I love that place because it's got all the oak trees with the Spanish moss. Stayed at the Howard Johnson, uh, also across the street. I'm a Wyndham Rewards uh, member, get many free nights. I would advise joining that, it doesn't cost anything, and they asked me to join it in 2003, and I've been 100% pleased with it. But um, have bought this many times in Tallahassee, and uh, drank it, think about it, drank it, think about it, drank it, think about it. And uh, I've probably thought about Schlitz Gold Bull more than, or as much as any other beer. And um, You know, I'm thinking uh, Fuller's Vintage Ale. I paid $7.99 for that. Wonderful beer. 
outstanding. It can go toe to toe with more or less anything on the planet. But, 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 but. This beer would be considered a, a joke, an insult, uh, outlandish, incredible, beyond the pale. But um, all of those uh, evaluations I think are unfair. For somebody like myself who's been in the trenches with Schlitz VSL, who's walked that extra mile with Schlitz VSL, um, been dealing with the Schlitz brand since 73 as a five year old and all of that backstory. Um, I cannot say that. The Fuller's Vintage Ale is appreciably better than this. Now, it's different. It's different. Uh, you drink the Schlitz VSL, you don't get the metal, you don't get the uh, galvanized culvert. Your dog going right, you're going to get a harshness. It's got a bull on it. Bulls don't come at you soft. A bull does not charge at you with... Uh, endearment, niceties, uh, sympathy of any sort, but uh, this beer comes at you in a manly way, a masculine way, a macho way, or whatever you want to say, like even you know, if you watch Godfather Part 1 a few times. Uh, and I can appreciate it. I don't mind getting stabbed through the heart by Schlitz VSL. I don't mind uh, its uh, take no prisoners approach. I respect it. I deal with it. I handle it. And uh, I get it. So uh, you're going to get a case of this, a case. Call your distributor. They'll tell you about it. I know about it. I've talked to mine. You'll get a case of this for less than $20. It'll take you on the ride you need to want to... It'll take you on the ride you want to ride on. Uh, I'm not on that ride, uh, not being into alcoholism. But um, it'll take you on a ride of... Uh, Let me say it like this, it'll take you on an interesting ride. You'll go places you haven't been before and you'll think about things you haven't thought of. Yes, this will too. Certainly, certainly. But going on one ride doesn't mean that the other ride is inferior to the one you went on subsequently. So, um, that being said, Discussing the Schlitz VSL, the Colt 45 High Gravity, the St. Ides, the High Gravity 800 Old English, the Steel Reserve, the Category 5, 8.1%. I could talk about this for about one hour. About one hour. Um, taking all that into account, we have to say that this is a good deal it's a good value but don't forget these count these matter these have a, a, a reason to exist so uh, do I appreciate this beer definitely profoundly uh, I admire this beer with great admiration but on the other hand, I admire those with great admiration. They're both made very carefully, with skill, care, and thought. So, uh, you say, what's the point? What are you talking about? What is, the, what is, it, what is all this? What is this? The, this is this. 
This is a fantastic beer. It's memorable. I'll think about it many times over the next 20 years, and I'll think about it with uh, pleasure, admiration, joy. But I'll also think of these with pleasure, admiration, and joy. Uh, it's an exciting adventure. This beer journey is not getting old. Uh, when I started this February 1996 with Miller High Life 7 ounce ponies, six pack at Winn Dixie, you know, I, I said, What is this about beer? I'm 27 years old and I'm saying, I'm saying, What is this about beer? What is it? I don't drink beer, I have no interest in it, don't care about it. But I thought to myself, I said, let me go to the grocery store and buy a six pack of seven ounce Miller High Life, Miller High Life just to see, could there be something to it? Yeah, I was scared to buy it because I thought, could this start something that won't stop, that could go on for 40, 50 years? The answer was, yeah, it probably will go on for 40 or 50 years, much like Major League Baseball. Don't go to the game. Don't go to the game because you know it's going to happen. Yeah, I went to the Rangers game versus Seattle 2000, year 2000. <clears throat> 36 Major League ballparks later, it's just getting started. Uh, hundreds of beer reviews later, this is just getting started. Um, it's not going to stop anytime soon. Um, but the point about it is, don't get into it if you can't handle it. <laughs> uh, Y'all come on down to Louisiana. <laughs>